Hello everyone, this is my millionaire mechanical calculator. These wonderful calculators began being produced in the late 1890s and were made all the way up until the 1930s. They were the first commercially successful machines that were able to perform direct multiplication. In other words, they could do multiplication in one cycle instead of multiple cycles like common rotary calculators at the time. Now, this specific calculator is serial number 4073, which places it being made in around 1920. This model, however, is the 8E. So the 8 stands for the input, which you can see is the sliders right here. There's eight of them along with an eight digit counter. So that's what the 8's for, and the E is for electric. So this is the motorized version. You've got the motor switch right here. And if we look under the machine, we can see the motor right here, the switch that controls the motor, the cord, and the belt that connects the motor to the machine. The cord on this machine was in really rough shape and had to be completely replaced along with the wiring to the motor. And this is still the original leather belt from the machine. We'll start with this panel. You have the motor switch that obviously turns on or off the motor and also connects the main drive to the machine. This is the multiplication lever along with a button to cycle the machine. This is your input. This model specifically has sliders, which is one of the rare electric models. Normally, if you wanted the electric model, you got the keyboard, because if you wanted it electric, you wanted to be able to do uh, operations relatively quickly. And sliders, trying to set numbers, is usually not as quick compared to the keyboard. Over here, you have the selector knob, so you can change modes. You've got division, subtraction, addition, and multiplication. Over here is the crank to manually cycle the machine. And then down here is the massive carriage on this machine. This knob can be used to push it down and you can move the carriage back and forth. The accumulator register here does have twirlers, so you can set a number useful for division or if you have a number you already want to operate on. And then beside each of the registers is a clearing lever that you pull to clear that register. This model does not have the third one right here that can clear both of them. So to operate the electric machines, the first thing you want to do is remove this crank. There's a little spot for it in the lid. It sits right there, it's magnetic so it stays in. The reason you want to do that, there's this little notch right here that the lever, uh, the hand crank has a pin that sticks out. If you try and run it with a motor, this will catch and the belt will probably come off the machine. So, and then all you have to do is flip the switch to start it. Right. Now let's take a look under it. You can see the belt wobbling some. That tensioner isn't as tight as it should be. And the belt's a little old, so it's way kind of a lot. But it'll st still do okay. Let's go back up here. So, if we simply want to add something, first, make sure this is set to addition. And then, select the number you want to add. So we can just do 25. And you can see it right here in the little input. And then to add it, you set it to one. It's important for addition and subtraction. This is I set to one. And then press the button to cycle the machine. And now we can see in the accumulator, it's been added in right here. If we do it again, 50, 75, 190. If we want to subtract, simply move this over to subtraction. Same thing, and it subtracts. It's clear. Full layering is clear. On this machine, the counter does not operate in addition and subtraction. So, if you want to multiply numbers, first make sure the selector is set to multiplication, and then enter the first number. So we'll do six twenty-five, and then put. 
to 625. And then we want to multiply that by 625. So we need to get 625 in the counter. It starts counting right here. So our first thing is multiply over to 6. Push the button. And now 6 is in the counter. And then move it to 2. And 5. So now we see 625 times 625 is 39065. It can also handle really large ones with relative ease. So 9, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1 times 45. And etc. See, it's kind of slow work with this input, whereas on the keyboard you can just push the clear button and they don't. Clear. Now, division on this machine is a little bit complicated. For division, you have to make use of this table up here in the lid. The lid does have instructions for all operations, addition, subtraction, multiplication, and division, and it's got tables to aid in division. So first thing you want to do is set the divisor in your input on the far leftmost side. So we'll do 113. And then you want to set the slider to where the first two digits of your divisor is right here in the divisor hole. So the first two digits of 113 is 11. So move this up to 11. And now we need to put the dividend down here in the accumulator. Move the carriage all the way back to its palm position. So first we want to move it over with a leading zero. You can tell that because the numbers up here for our divisor start with a zero. So down here it's zero, three, five, five. Now turn on the machine. So the way you want to do this is you look at the three digits beside this line below the dividend and compare them to the table up here. So the first three digits is 0, 3, 5. You look up here and try and find that in these holes mark the dividend. So 0, 3, 5 would fall in between 3 and 4. So you go with the lower number always. So in this case it would be 3, where it says the quotient. That's what you're trying to solve for, the quotient. So you enter 3 using the multiply lever. You also have to make sure this is set to division. So now 3. So now we have 3 in our quotient and a new set of digits here. So now it's 0, 1, 6. So we go back up here to the table. 0, 1, 6 would fall in between 1 and 2. So we enter 1 using the multiply lever. 1. Now you have 3, 1 in the quotient. Now it says 0, 4, 7. So up here, that would be in between 4 and 5. So we enter 4 in the multiply lever. Now it says 0, 1, 8. So back up here, look at this. 0, 1, 8 falls between 1 and 2. So we enter 1. Now it says 0, 6, 7, back up here. That would be just above 6, so we press 6. And now the bell rings. So if we look at the accumulator, we can see there's a lot of 9s, and an underflow has happened. So essentially, while this table is extremely helpful, it's not perfect for all calculations you want to do. So sometimes there's errors, and you have to correct them. To correct it when it underflows, when you hear the bell ring and the carriage isn't all the way over here, you want to first set the machine to addition, and then just add the divisor in one time, it dings again, now it's all zeros, and we can continue on, switch it back over to division. 
So now we have 1, 0, 5. Go back up here. That's greater than 9. So 1, 3, 9. Now it's 0, 33. So 3. If it is that number, you still go with the lowest one. So we enter 2. Now it's 1, 0, 4, which is above 0, 99, so 9. And this time it dings, but it dings because the carriage is in its leftmost position. So now we can look at our quotient in the counter with this for the decimal point it is 3.14159299. So we successfully estimated pi with a 110-year-old electric mechanical calculator. Reset everything. And yeah, that's just a quick tidbit about how to operate an electric millionaire calculator. Thanks for watching.